1000 EDDM flyers is not going to do anything for our location is we're actually going the EDDM route just because I know it works if it's done at the right time. If I was in your boat, which I'm actually similarly in your boat because we're literally building a second company right now. I had a, I had a day where I had a negative business account, negative personal account, and all of my credit cards were maxed out. We went from 15 mowing customers to 70 or 72, I think. All right. So we have Cody back on. He was on, uh, what was that last year? Almost a year ago, like probably within a few weeks. I think it was, it was, uh, just a few weeks after landscape summit 2023. Like yeah. Right after that. So I like it. So you have, last year, yeah. you have the white lights back there. It's not purple anymore, but I know, I remember your purple lights back there and everything. You were like the premier video on the channel for a long time. So, um, I appreciate you coming back on. So, uh, what questions can I help you out with? I have, a very new situation. Um, I'm, I don't know if there's anyone that would be watching this that watched the last video we did together where I was needing help. So, so just a quick recap, the last situation I was in uh, about a year ago when we did the call was I, the, the previous year, um, 2022, I had been solo doing like two days a week, uh, just had like 15, 20 mowing customers, probably like 15, um, just to myself. It was just like a side thing. And then I went full time in 2023 and that's what I was talking to you about and how to, cause I had two trucks, I had all, all the equipment and I, had, I was hiring uh, one of my good friends and I was ramping up very quickly. And I was asking you about how to do that and how to uh, try to navigate it with uh, the low cash that I had. Um, and that was in Michigan. Um, I moved, I am now in Georgia. So I am kind of in a similar position except for I have the whole year of experience. Um, just a recap on how we did. Um, didn't do, um, I think I talked to you at Summit about this. It kind of, it, it didn't necessarily humble me, but I learned a lot of things that I didn't anticipate. Um, and you talked about that. You said I had a lot to learn before I grew super quickly, which I, it hit me in the face. Um, nothing too bad, but um, we went from 15 mowing customers to 70 or 72, I think in like, under 40 days, like 35 days. And it was from 33 or just, just about 3000 door hangers and just a website and then our purple trucks driving around. So that was like, I mean, I think, uh, April we did 6,700, um, which was our biggest month at the time. And then may we did like 17 and a half thousand. So, and then after every month after that, for the rest of the year was like 12 to 15,000. Um, so it was just like, the most stressful month. I mean, you know, that's like, it's like, it literally, I couldn't even understand how I got through it when I was through it. Um, we had a month or sorry, we, I had a, I had a day where I had a negative business account, negative personal account, and all of my credit cards were maxed out and I had payroll coming and I made payroll by $2. I had like, also on top of that, I had like 20 or $25,000 of debt. And it was like 10 or 15, I think like 15,000 of it was like high interest credit card debt. Mm -hmm. um, now at the end of the season, I, well, now that this, that season ended, I am going into this spring. I, I move. Okay. So the year went well. I had a, I had one guy the whole year full time and I've, I've, uh, let him go at the end of October. Cause our mowing season in Michigan ends in October. So a bit of insight on why I made the move is a huge thing that I know you guys do and a lot of Augusta people do is um, winter services to be able to retain. It, it, obviously, everyone knows the benefits of winter services if you're listening to this channel, hopefully. Um, if not, then anyone listening to this should look into winter services. But um, we did 15,000 in September, 12,000 in October, 4,000 in November, and 400 in December. So... Winter services, I'm not going to say you can't do it in Michigan, but it's very hard to do. There's a lot of snow coverage um, and it's just like sloshy, slushy weather. Um, nothing grows. There's there's never like an occasional mow throughout the winter. There's like five months where you're not doing any mowing. Um, all the bushes die and everything like that. They don't die. They just like lose all their everything. So there's not a lot of like winter services to go on there. It's, it's very seasonal. It's, it's a lot harder to keep a team on around there. So I woke up one day in December and this is actually the same desk that I'm doing. Yeah. You mentioned the lights, it's the same desk that I'm doing the interview from, but I live here now. Um, this is my girlfriend's house. Um, so I woke up one day in December and I decided 
Um, I want uh, that if I wanted to grow a team of like 10 to 15 people in the next like six to seven years, like I plan on doing, I'm going to have an incredibly harder time doing it in Michigan with the seasonality. So I called my girlfriend and asked if I could stay in her house for a couple months and then around springtime, get an apartment and then restart here. So that was three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And now I'm here. I drove down three times, once with my car and twice with the trucks. Everything's here, parked outside. Um, now I'm here. So I'm pretty much in the same situation where I'm trying to ramp up super quickly. But last time I had three grand in cash and didn't have my trucks painted. That was one of the things I was asking you. Both of the trucks are painted and logoed. I have, I'll have 15 grand in cash going into spring. Um, I have 11 grand in debt, but it's all 0% interest and it's all like paid up and everything. World of a difference in the financial situation I'm in right now and like the preparedness. Um, so now I'm questioning, or my questions for you are regarding how to grow really quickly. I want to go to um, 18 to 25, 18 to like 26, 27,000 a month, somewhere in there. And the reason I chose those revenue points is like, 18 would be like me and one person pretty much maxed out. And then 26 to 27 would be like me and two people with me doing like maybe 10 budgeted hours, 15 budgeted hours if I'm lucky. And then the other two guys with like 30 budgeted hours. Mm -hmm. um, and that's at $80 an hour. We're, we're at 70, but once we, that's just until we start to fill up. So you said you have two trucks, yes, correct? Sir. So my goal <clears throat> from an asset utilization standpoint is to get those out on out in the field as quickly as possible. So right off the bat, what I would do if I was in your boat, which I'm actually similarly in your boat because we're literally building a second company right now that is like like is just right where you're at. I think it has 17 customers right now. So we're trying to get it up to like 100 customers this year. Exactly. I'm trying to go to like 110, 120, like just straight mowing. Yeah. So you have the assets. You just need the people and the customers which is really the only two things that matter is hiring and sales. Yeah. So $15,000 is a pretty good budget to be able to deploy this. There's kind of two approaches that you can do. So you can either have, you can either, what I would do is if you have two trucks, you know, you can have four team members, right? Two in each truck. So I would off right off the bat about a week or two before the grass starts to come out of dormancy down there, hire at least one or two guys and have a third one basically coming within the next, you know, two to four weeks, right? Um, order door hangers, have them literally go out, put door hangers out, like all you guys. I have 7,000 of them sitting here. So. Yeah. So all of you guys, like, hey, all we're going to do is like hang out door hangers. As the calls come in, you're going to put them to work. So the first week, everybody may be doing door hangers, but I guarantee you after one week, you're going to be getting calls. You're going to have jobs on the schedule. You're going to be doing quotes. And then it's going to come to a point where it's like, okay, you guys are going to do the work. I'll still put out door hangers and you're just going to kind of evolve and, and do things of that nature. Um, what we are doing for our location is we're actually going the EDDM route just because I know it works if it's done at the right time. So it's actually cheaper to do the EDDM but you got to be very careful with that because like if you only have $15,000 budget, you don't want to pump a lot of EDDM out. I think the safer bet is to do just door hangers and have them manually hand them out because as you hand them out and work comes in, you could just shift over to like them actually doing the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was one of my questions that I have in the marketing plan is I have, um, I plan on spending like a thousand bucks on EDDM, which doesn't go super far, but I just wanted to kind of test it out. Bless you. Thank um, you. and I was going to ask you, cause I know you guys have sent out like tens of thousands of flyers just from watching your stuff. Um, so I was going to ask it, if one, if you think I should do EDDM and if so, how do you think I should do it? And then I also have, um, a, something I'll add after I get this answer that kind of spices things up a little bit with that. I think EDDM might be a play. Um, you have $15,000 to work with. You already have $7,000 door hangers. 1,000 EDDM flyers is not going to do anything. Just okay. if not you do easy. that, if you do that, just understand like you're not going to get a ton of volume from that. You're just not. Right. 5,000 is like probably the least amount that you would want to do to do a test batch. If you want to do $1,000 worth of them, I think it's part of the play. But just don't be like, just under go into it the mindset like EDDM is not what's going to get you to 100 customers. 
It's not. It's going to be your truck branding. It's going to be your website. It's going to be your door hangers that you guys are going to hit hard. EDDM might get you. So if you send out 1,250, I'll do the math actually. In our market, again, your market might be a little bit different, but we get 9% of customers that will actually call us uh, based on that flyer. And 9%. 9% to call, actually call. From that 9%, we have about a 33%. One third of that will convert. That's 3%. It still seems like such a high return from EDM. Okay. One one to 3% conversion is what we see. But even if you run it at the, at the low end of 1% on 1,000 flyers, that should be what? 10 customers? So um, just, just know that like that's not going to be the big lever that you pull on that. But it could be a piece, a piece of puzzle. Now, what... Like, and and then you could go back and test it, right? And see like, how, like how many actually converted and then get the math for your area. Now, timing is very important for this stuff. So you would want to send it when the pain is the highest. We're sending 30,000 flyers out this year. Ours, our flyer basically, like we have to do it within six weeks. Because if we pushed them all out in one week, we, we wouldn't be able to catch all the calls. You know, but for you, if you're sending out 1250, you would want to do it on the most painful week of the spring rush as possible when everybody's calling you on web on the website anyways, when everybody like that's when it works well, you know, that's when you want to get, you know, that's where you'll get the best return for the dollar. Don't do it too soon where the grass is still kind of coming out of dormancy and don't do it too late where the grass is already growing a lot. You got to do it right at that pain point. Have you considered so? So obviously you can you can um on the EDDM tool you can select the actual like the exact mail route and you can kind of see like the neighborhood, um and obviously most of them are just like very similar properties um on the on each mail route. So have you thought about um giving exact pricing or at least rough pricing on the EDDM flyer for that mail route, um. I guess the only issue I could find with that is that you'd be paying more per flyer because you'd have to buy in smaller quantity specific to the mail route for what's on them. But I feel like if someone looks at a flyer uh, to see like, I'm going to call about this lawn care, that it's the same as like an instant quote door hanger. Like they can literally see like they're offering us this price. And like you could obviously personalize it with like for your neighborhood special or something. And it's this exact pricing. Um, and then maybe like bump it up 10% just to cover in case someone has a bigger lawn in there or something like that. Yeah, I agree with you. That would be so simple and easy to do. Um, and then when you when they call, they're hot leads. You know, you could just book them. Yeah. The only issue with that is our subdivisions. There are there are literally times where you may have like a twenty minute lawn, and then like literally a sixty minute lawn if you were doing it by yourself. I'm telling you, in these neighborhoods, sometimes the the areas are cut differently and things like that. So you just got to be careful with that. Also on the EDDM flyers, sometimes it'll grab a whole neighborhood and then it'll grab like a portion of this neighborhood over here. Yeah. yeah. And if those have like different size lots, you'd hate to $35 cuts and it's actually a $50 yeah. or $60 cut. And then you like feel bad not honoring it or, you know, get a bad rep that way. I just got back from Washington. I spent uh, two weeks out there with two of the Augusta franchisees. And they were doing snow plowing. Um, they, I just ran a truck for them and I li I stayed in one of their apartments and just like, you know, lived with them for two weeks and kind of just got to peek into what they're doing. And it was pretty cool. Um, but they, in the spring, they used, they were telling me about Thumbtack and they've showed me their, like what they, what, how they, how they use it and what they do with it and everything. And it's, it's basically just like a home service. People go on there homeowners they go to look for home services to find contractors and you make a thumbtack pro account and they send you leads just as like home advisor angie leads or angie's list would so my, my only counter to that is like when someone goes out and goes to your website like you're usually not the only website they're going to anyway like they're they're doing the same thing just on their own instead of having angie's list doing it for them um so it's kind of like i i just see it as like the same thing however you are paying for the lead rather on your website you're not paying for the lead um directly but the lead cost on Thumbtack is the average lead cost is $13 for like a lawn care lead um, in the spring. And the uh, the two gentlemen in Washington I was staying with, um, they have told me that 
it gets so busy on Thumbtack in spring that sometimes they just give them free leads. Like they have so many leads um, throughout the spring in like super populated areas on Thumbtack. Like they're getting leads for like five to $10 all day. And they're just lawn care, like mowing leads. Um, not sure if that's something you've looked into. Maybe it's worth a download for you to, you just set like a weekly budget and it's not, it, it's um not like Google, like pay-per-click ads, where if you put $25, there's only so much traffic. So if you put $50, they're still going to spend your $50. Um, the leads are based, the lead price is based off of the um, service, the specific services that the customer looking for the contractor has inputted that they want. And that's what the lead price is based off of. So if you have like, you, you could lose, uh, if you have like a $70 a week budget, you could if there's enough leads, you could use all of it on Monday and then you just won't get any for the week. Um, but yeah, it works a little different than pay-per-click ads. It's, it's obviously just paper lead and you set your budget. Um, sounds like I'm advocating for it right now. I've really never used it, but the, those guys have used it. And so far it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to be turning that on um, for like maybe 50, 60 bucks a week budget in the spring. And if it's working, I'm going to ramp it up um, because I'm in a super, super pot. I'm in Atlanta Metro area now. So hundreds of thousands of people here now where I'm used to a smaller market. So that's just something that I'm going to be looking into. I'd wondered if you'd heard of it, but maybe it's worth a shot for you as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's good. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. I, I'd be curious how it does. Um, we, we, we don't use a lot of those sites, but um, that sounds pretty interesting. So let me know how it goes. If, if it works well. I don't know if you've gone back and watched a lot of Mike's content, like from like years ago um, or like his old podcast called business bootcamp but he did this thing. He used to do this thing where he did a monthly um, check-in and he would show the profit and loss by month of every single business of his. Um, and it, it, like, like this is the February update and he would like February 1st update. He would go and show like the Jan profit and loss of January for all of the different businesses. Um, do you ever have any ambitions of doing anything like that? Cause I think that would be really cool to see since you're in such a growth phase of like, like five years from now, you might have, well, I don't know what your goals are, but I know you want like 10 locations or something like that. So like five years from now, you might have like five locations. So to be able to see even quarterly, the, not only the profit, but how the graph of the, the, the pro or not only the revenue, but the graph of the profit as well over the next few years. I don't know. It's just a question if you plan on doing anything like that, or if you would. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that. I didn't know that was on business or landscape business course or whatever. Uh, business weekend. It's free. It's on Spotify. Yeah. But I, I should, I should look into that. Um, that's interesting that he documented that. I don't, I don't, I think, think, it, I don't think it'd be good on YouTube, like maybe inside of an internal course or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, just because like from the algorithm standpoint that I don't think that would get a ton of views okay. on YouTube. It might hurt the algorithm, but yeah, for something that like, like internally, like of, of a course of like somebody that wants like to get really deep into the weeds of things and like, yeah, that might be, might be beneficial. Yeah, it was it was a cool it was cool to watch. I think he I think he might have done it some on YouTube, but this was like years ago when he might have had like ten thousand subscribers or something like that. Um, but he did I think he did it for like probably a year. Um, but this was like 20, 2019, I think maybe twenty twenty. But anyway, um, could you give me? I know just a few. I've been listening to these interviews you've been doing. Uh, I kind of feel like I helped you start a trend here, being uh, the first. I, was I the first one you did this with? Like first person. I think, year? I think you were the first, like, I think you were the first five, like at least the first three or five, like you were one of the OG <laughs> originals, you know, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've been watching the last few and I saw you, someone talk to you about, someone was talking to you about winter service. I think they were in like Alabama or something like that. I think you said it was like 60% of your customers were on winter services at that point. I don't remember what they asked you. How is that going now? Because it's been a month or two or a few weeks at least since then. So like, could you tell me how many customers you had on like your last week of mowing and how many you still have right now that are being serviced, um, you know, on winter yeah, services? Yeah, I could pull that data to take me a little bit right now. What, what I'll tell you is in the beginning, it's about 70%. When you get to like January, it's about 60%. 60% is about where we end up right before it starts to, to, uh, kick back up again. Um, the reason why I don't want to pull up the numbers per se and give you the exact, and, and I probably could down the road, but like, or like when we get off the call, I can maybe email it to you if you need the exact numbers. Yeah. I just wanted rough numbers. You're good. Um, no we just shifted over, shifted over to copilot. So a lot of the old data is in service autopilot. And so it's like kind of a pain going back and forth. Plus like, um, 
Copilot has some hurdles that we're working through as far as like the scheduling. So it's like, even though they're on the, it's, it's kind of complicated. There's not a waiting list yet in Copilot. So a lot of our schedule right now is a little miscombobulated on there until we can get, you know, the waiting list and everything. So it's not like cut and clear yet, right? There's still kind of like, there's work, there's workarounds in it um, that we're kind of working through. But uh, it's not clearly like cut and dry of like how many jobs are on there. If we were still on service autopilot, I'd be able to give it to you like in probably 30 seconds. I could pull it up. But yep. um, but yeah, I'd say it's about 60%. 60, okay. 60% is about that number. Give or take maybe 10% depending on markets. So so could you give me, obviously I don't need exact numbers, but could you give me like um, kind of like I was telling you, like we did 15,000 September, 12,000 October, and then November when we stopped mowing, we did 4,000. That was just like the remainder of our cleanups that we didn't get done in October and then December, like 400 bucks. Could you kind of give me that? But I, cause I want to see what that looks like with keeping people on winter services. If that makes any sense, if that makes any sense, like the revenue drop off throughout the winter months from you know, the last month or two of mowing. Yeah. So what you do in June, July, August, cut that in a third. That'll okay. basically be what you'll make in December, January, and February, about a third. Okay. Yeah. Depending on, and then like, there's a lot of variables. You may get more leaf cleanups. You may get other one-time jobs that come down the pipe, but typically revenue, what we see gets cut in about a third. That's why we cut our, we don't really cut our team. They kind of just, some of them will filter, filter themselves out or some, you know, are just working part-time and stuff. So we retain our core team, roughly about 40% of our team to cover for that. How have you done with uh, Google ads and are you on Google local services as well? I'm not. I've heard good things about that. Um, I'm not on Google local services. I'm not on Google ads. I've tried Google ads. We haven't got great return. I've tried Facebook ads. Haven't got great return. I've never taken a master course. I've just YouTube stuff and it just doesn't work for me. I don't see a lot of great return on that. I think what works in our market is like flyers. And, um, I mean, we do do Google, my business, like we drive reviews really hard. Like I just won the iPad in the co-pilot group from Mike. Uh, <laughs> and he, I haven't even, I haven't looked at the co-pilot group in months cause we haven't done any work, but I totally forgot that was a thing. I didn't even know that we we're doing it. Yeah. So they do like workflow weekends and I built this automation out. That's basically, it's called 60 days to close. And it, it literally fully automates your collections process to where you don't have to do anything except for react as they come in and out. So, um, cause we used to spend so much time like calling them and everything, but anyway, so everybody like liked my post or whatever. And I guess uh, I won the iPad. It was beneficial for everybody. So they sent it to me in the mail. So I took the iPad and we actually did a challenge for our, uh, our employees and customers. And we said, Hey, whoever leaves a Google review will write your name down on raffle. And after at the end of 10 days, we'll pull it. So we just put that promotion out and we already got like 20 Google reviews Ooh, and we, great. and I think we posted this yesterday. So awesome. um, we do stuff like that to, cause we know like three weeks from now when people go to Google, you know, the ones that have the good reviews, you know, so we're, we're getting good return with that. If you had to decide today that you could only do one marketing method for the rest of your growth in lawn care business, what is it and why? All right, that's really tough. If I only had one, but I, I I would highly recommend two. Like you have to do these two. Yeah, yeah. This is this is like bare bones. You don't have an option. But and then expand on the second one as well. But I want to hear like your one and why. Okay, number one is door hangers. One thousand percent. I guarantee it works in any market. If you do it at the right time, I I promise you. If you put a door hanger on there and it has mowing and they need it, they're going to call. Like it's just. It's a, they have to physically take it off their doorknob. It's in their hand and and they're going to read it, you know? Um, so I would say door hangers, even when you're just getting started, door hangers is the best because that will get you your first five or 10 customers. I'd say the second thing would be your uh, logos on the trucks. It's a one-time fee. Wow. It's a one-time fee and it's a, it's a long-term branding, branding play, right? Now, most people might say like Google ads and all that stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't work for us. What I know what works is, is flyers. And I, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I believe it would work in any market if it's not at the right time. We don't hand out flyers in the fall or the winter. We do it in the spring when it's, when it's needed. And if you do it at the right time and you get the entire crews to hand them out, dude, there's no reason you shouldn't have 60 customers in a couple of weeks.
There's no reason. And so, um, and then with the truck thing, you pay one time and you have it for the next five years. So the flyers get you the initial customers. And then the, the, the logo trucks are basically a, a one-time fee. It's, it's infinite return after that for the next five years. Um, I'd say those, those, those are the two that I would do. That's what we built our first location off of doing 630,000 and we're, we're doing it with the second one. We're just sending them through the mail this time. That was good to hear. I, I like the, uh, I just wanted to hear what you had to say about that. That's, I, I did not expect the uh, logo. I didn't even think about that. Actually, the logos on the truck being one of the options. Um, but yeah, that's, it's good to hear. Good to know. Um, I think, so I actually have one of the trucks. I have two trucks painted purple. One of them has logos. The other one doesn't. I think after this conversation, I'm going to take the money that I had allocated towards EDDM. I'm not going to do EDDM and I'm going to get the other truck logoed instead. Um, and I think that's like, one of the big things I'll take from this call for sure. Um, but I know that it says there's a minute left in this call real quick. Last thing I want to finish with. Um, I have 7,000 door hangers. I'm going to spend like two, maybe 1500, 2000 bucks between Google ad, uh, Google ads, Google local service, ad, 2,500 bucks between Google ads, and Google local service ads, 7,000 door hangers and the two trucks that are logoed. Plus I'm doing that stuff with like that, that app thumbtack. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that is reasonable to get to 100, 120 million customers? I think 120 might be a stretch for that. What I would recommend is put every dollar you 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 possibly could. I mean, you said you got fifteen thousand dollars. I would try to pump at least eight of that. I mean, you want a little buffer room for payroll, right? You know, for the for the couple of weeks and months as you're starting to like ramp it up. Yeah, I would I would try to push out like. A, a decent chunk. I mean, you already have all the assets, you have the equipment and all that stuff, but I would try to, I would try to use like 8,000 of that towards like marketing. And that, okay. that's, that, that's what we're doing over there. And I might have to put a little bit more money in, but, um, but yeah, I would try to do as much as you can, you know, cool. in the spring. All right, man. I appreciate it. I want to get cut off here. It says less than a minute left on the call. So I appreciate it. Um, are you going to the next summit that's in Seattle? I am.